Welcome back. Well, it is the ultimate vanity plate. If you're a politician in hot water, roasted by voters or poached by the press, there is a chance you might make it onto the menu of an eatery that dines out on its most loyal customers. But if politicians are your main course, sometimes elections force you to update your dishes. To mark the end of week one of this new parliament, here's Corey O'Kelly. I won't be able to seat you. I'm totally full. It sits just across the street from the Peace Tower. But the folks who run the Parliament pub like to say the business of the nation gets done here. Meet owner Stan Lithwick, who's turned his upscale pub into a political eating institution in Ottawa. He's done it with his menu, which for years has lambasted liberals and toasted Tories. While we have a Johnny Crouton Caesar salad, we call him a friendly dictator. On a busy day, the place is packed with politicians and senators, and little wonder, it's a shrine to politics. The walls are festooned with familiar faces, past and present, but only a lucky few find their way to the food list. So how do I get to be on your menu? Uh, you either have to be a um, politician that might have got into a little trouble, or their portfolio isn't working the way they want it to work, and they become news. Sounds like there'd be an endless supply of talents. And here are just a few. The aforementioned Johnny Crouton salad, the Dennis Mills Danforth salad, Bill Graham's Portobello mushrooms, and Stephen Harper baby greens, as well as a bunker buster salad named for David Pratt. The customers love it. Well, it's the longest uh, name on a menu I've ever seen, the Jack Layton Coalition of the Unwilling Chicken Caesar Wrap. You might be going for Looks, Yeah, I think so. Uh, I am too. I think the politically correct sandwich is apropos for today. Uh, I can't make any suggestions for changes in the menu, but I think Stephen Harper should have a main course, not, not a salad. Get rid of the Stephen Harper uh, salad to begin with and just get him right off the menu. But <laughs> We still have two solitudes. The Jack Layton Coalition of the Unwilling is 9.95 in English, and in French it's 10.95. Is there a reason? That's very interesting. What do you make of that? I think we have a long way to go with Confederation. <laughs> and don't think for one moment these politicians aren't dying to be a menu item, so they can be seen in cuisine. Well, there are many politicians that come in and will order their particular dish. Yeah, really? No, I'm serious. Shameless. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Um, some uh, I've seen. It's like laughing at your own joke. Well, I've seen some. I've seen some members of Parliament come in and actually show the table their particular menu item. Oh, give me drop a name here. Stan. No, 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 no. I, I would. I, I can't do that. Scoop. One cabinet minister actually had his staff ask if he could be named a salad item. No luck. In order to make our menu, you've got to be really, really good or really, really bad. <laughs> Mac Harb, uh, he never made our menu, but he was here often. Now with a new parliament, there's a fresh crop of faces ready for frying and poaching. I have a few appetizers from the new menu expected out in two weeks, and Stephen Harper's hot. He might still be in the salad category. No, we've named a um, Stephen Harper's right-wing voodoo chicken sandwich. Ah, oh, you promised! Ed Broadbent, come on down, you've made tomato bruschetta. Which is interesting because that's Paul Martin's old item, but now? We have the Paul Martin's everything to everyone sun-dried tomato pizza. Looks like someone has made the big time. Corey O'Kelly, CBC News, Ottawa. And again, our take on week one. Coming up, we're going to tell you...